This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a huge padlock that I believe Yale only sells in Israel, the Smart Padlock 16. The 16 in the name indicates the absurdly thick 16 millimeter shackle. Now this lock is very similar to its cousin in the Asa Abloy lineup, the Multilock C16 padlock. And like the Multilock, this Yale can be outfitted with a high shackle guard to convert it into a closed shackle padlock. Now the main difference between these two locks is the core. The Yale has a normal 7-pin dimple core, whereas the Multilock has a 10-pin dimple core with the telescoping pin-in-pin -pin arrangement. Now I featured this Multilock a long time ago in video number 235, so if you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But today, we're going to see what it takes to pick into this massive Yale padlock. If we look at the bottom, we can see there is a spring-loaded dust cover, and we're going to push that aside with this Z-bar. Okay. Then to lift the pins, I'm going to be using one of my Sparrow's black flag picks. Okay, one is binding. Got to click there. Nothing on two, nothing on three. Click out of four, click out of five, little click on six, seven is binding. Got a click out of him and we dropped into a false set. Going back to the beginning, nothing on one, counter rotation on two, I think we got two set. Number three, counter rotation. I think we got three set. Nothing on four. Nothing on five, six, or seven. Pulling back, I am. I got stuck behind something. Let's see if I could find that. What that was. Nothing on one, two. I must not have set three properly. There we go, I set three and it looks like we have this open. Okay, let's take this apart and look at what's inside. Clearly there were a couple of spools, but let's take a look at those pins. To take this apart, after the shackle is removed, all we need to do is remove this Allen screw. Once that screw is out, the entire padlock slides apart. On the bottom, we don't want to lose this little spring, so let's get that out and also remove the dust cover. We can also take a look at the locking mechanism here. You can see the spring, which actually applies spring tension to the entire core. And we have these two thick locking logs. Now this is a lock that's actually pretty difficult to get apart cleanly. So this may be a very ugly gutting, but we'll do what we can. There's actually nothing holding the top and the core. So as I pull these apart, those pins are going to drop out. Hopefully I can direct them into the tray. Okay, as anticipated, that was pretty ugly, but hopefully I kept them all in the correct positions. So this was number seven. I think we have six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, let's drop those key pins out now. Number one's a little bit shy. Let's see if I can help push him out with my dimple pick. Okay, that was actually number two. There's one. There's three, four, five, Six, 
six is a strangely shaped pen. And number seven, let me see if I can arrange all of these. And looking at these springs, nothing particularly unusual there. Okay, let me give you a close-up of all of this. Looking at those pins, we can see all standard key pins with the exception of number six. I'm not entirely sure why that pin is odd, but it is a very strange one. Then looking at the driver pins, we have all spools with the exception of number seven, which is standard. And note that these spools are different lengths, indicating there was an attempt at balancing the pin stacks. Looking over to the core, you can see that strange key pin fits into an oblong hole in the core. Again, not sure exactly why they do that. And there is nothing else unusual about that core. Okay, so that's all I have for you today on this Yale Smart Padlock 16. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.